Hey guys, what's up? How are you doing today? I've got a very special video for you. I've got Mallboy here or Fizzy. Same thing. Same thing. Same person. Um, but today's video, I want to have a conversation with you guys. It's kind of looking forward into the future for something that I'm extremely excited about. Some people are not. <laughs> um, some people have given up. I have not. It's, uh, it's about Destiny 2. And it comes out supposedly uh, this year. <laughs> Supposedly. <laughs> I'm not going to get my hopes up for that. But I do the have last some... time that Destiny supposedly, they're supposedly turned a year and a half long. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's part of their 10-year plan that lasted for four years. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and read off some information that we have found online. There's a lot of information like this. Some of it's less trustable and some of it's more trustable. I, I feel like this is more trustable. It's been from a source that's been trusted from Destiny 1 and it's been proven to be fairly accurate and before we jump into yeah, it it's just uh, we should say this has been around for this is this is not new news right uh, it's been around for a couple of days couple of weeks I think that people have already started responding to it there's video responses to this exact post and there are blog responses and things like that so this is just our take on it um, we're not necessarily breaking this down one way or another or saying you know this is all true or all false we're really just trying to make conversation with it turning this yeah. post into a conversation piece for the community. All right, so I'm going to go to start by reading some of this information because it's extremely interesting. Some of it was assumed, some of it's a no-brainer, some of it's a thank goodness, and some of it's a <laughs> oh no. I sure hope they know what they're doing. So let's go and jump into this, guys. All right, so the guy who typed this up said, I'm in close contact with a Bungie employee currently working on Destiny 2 in some capacity. That is the sole source of this info, Okay. So let's go and read this. They are not completely rebooting our characters. I don't believe that necessarily simply because what it states here doesn't make sense. It says, my source <laughs> described it as a clean slate, but not a full white. Apparently <laughs> our, <laughs> I don't know. Apparently our guardian will still retain their memories, <gasps> accomplishments, etc., up to this point, but we will not have any carryover gear, weapons, or items. Now, I want to pause and talk about this because... I'm all right with that a little bit. I mean, the game is about a grind, and that's kind of frustrating, especially since I have lots of God-rolled guns, and I will be sure to do some videos on those because they are very tasty. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to lose those probably. So I want to at least retain special, like, shaders, emblems, things that, like, yeah, you have some from the beta that I, I can't get, I have, and I respect that. I have that. emblems and shaders from way back in the day, like from beta and year one, that people can't get anymore, and... Uh, I would hate to lose those, especially yeah. after yeah. a reset like that. I would hate that Here's too. Here's what I'm thinking, and, and this is my assumption. This is actually something I'd kind of like to see. Would be such that we find find we found out oh um, we, found um, <laughs> <laughs> we find out that our character had been part of building some armory somewhere, and that's where all of our old uh, exotics and things are. Right. And we might not carry a lot of legendaries over. I really wouldn't expect us to. But yeah. with it being a game of a grind. But there are a lot of iconic guns in the game right now. I mean, one of my first exotics was Bad Juju. Yeah. I would hate to lose that. <laughs> Me too. I like Me too. Bad Juju. I like the way it plays. I like a lot of things about it. I like taking it into raids and never having to reload. It's wonderful. They're going to start off the game, instead of getting the white Kavastav, you're going to start with the fourth horseman. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to reach in that first chest, and instead of a preacher, you get a fourth horseman. It's like, what is that? I wish I, got, 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 got. I wish I had the preacher. Ah! Okay, so I've got some more questions to ask you about your opinions, but let's go to move on for now. Um, this one's kind of a vague statement here. There will be three new subclasses from the start. It says subclasses from the jump. This one is the existing classes will be fully <laughs> reworked, including new abilities, perks, visual effects. The visual effects is to be expected. Um, upgraded graphics, everything else, all that jazz. Especially considering, considering some other things. Kidding. But it says subclass. It doesn't say new classes. It says subclasses, <laughs> which is important because that means that we would still have three at the start. I wouldn't be surprised if they add a fourth in DLC and stuff like that, but... According to this source, we still only have, you know, the Solar, the Void, and the Arc. So right. I'm curious to add a new subclass to that. What you think that would be? Would it be like a light or darkness thing? Or um, kind of your ideas about what they would probably add right off the, the start? Well, based on some of the other things that are in this post, um, the biggest thing about the subclasses in Destiny right now that a lot of people actually don't even think about. I, people ask me all the time, why do you think Bungie hasn't put like a frost class in the game or something like that. I'm like, because all of the subclasses, the elements that we use in the game right now are forms of light. 
Right. Fire, lightning, and void. Yep. Void being the absence of light. So it pulls it in. Yep. Right. All of them are just different forms of light per se. Yeah. Um. What was one of the one of the other things? Elements of darkness. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Read the read his exact words. That we'll tie that into this one. All right. So let me go to find that. Yeah. It says powers of the darkness. Quotes around that will be introduced into the game. My source did not elaborate on this. So I guess one of the things we can assume is that maybe, um. We can talk more about this in a second with some other, uh, some of the other things that you have extrapolated. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it may be that at some point the Guardians decided that uh, you could fight fire Man- with fire. Manipulate the Taken as an ability. Yeah, now just manipulate the darkness against down. itself. Um, yeah. Create classes and that could new tie in forms with the of power. Right. Um, or it could tie in with Osiris and his experiments. Okay, so for this next part here, it's no, it's it's a no duh. This is probably gonna happen. <laughs> I said 2017. I believe it's gonna be 2018. It says the game may face a delay until the first quarter of 2018. Yeah. But what he says is important. It says my source didn't go, didn't get too specific, um, but hinted that they are having issues with the new engine that they are using. So new engine, which is to be expected as well, especially right. with it coming I- to PC possibly. Um, and possibly some hangups regarding narration and staff. So I wonder if they were trying to get people together for audio, or if people like quit, or they were trying to decide like, oh, are we going to bring back Dinkle? <laughs> Dinkle, 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 Dinkle I don't think that. they can afford but, him right now. Well, actually, they could, but <laughs> he'd be charging a lot more after they got rid of him. And they, and they even redid his old audio. <laughs> I know. Oh, that's so mean. Which I'm glad they did. It would be but, really frustrating to have old missions with the Dinkle bot, and, and then, then going back and go having. Back. Nolan North, which don't don't get me started on the ghost. I uh, I, just, I have bitter feelings about the ghost. There are I great things the and bot. bad things. Okay, yeah. there yeah, there are a lot of people who they go in one direction, they go in another. Some people hated Dinklage as the ghost, and other people hate Nolan North. I, I tend to like Nolan North. I like the style. Right. Um, we're not going to talk too much about it right now, I yeah. guess. But I like the style he had, and then. I, I, yeah, I see, and I liked Peter because it set the dark tone, yes. and I felt like and Cade, felt Cade more... kind of filled that role of funny for yes. me. But yes, the they, ghost and Cade together this, are iconic. The, the ghost iconic. stole a lot of, of Cade's comedy, where yeah. I think Cade could, should have kept a lot of that, and the ghost but, should have been a more robotic, before, flat character. Before, we get, before we get too into it, though, anyway. but Cade, Cade mm-hmm. also took on a little bit of a darker side with some of his backstory, too. That's true. But, but, you know, they kind of shared, which I, I appreciated it. I Cade did. is like the, he's the Tony Stark of the tower. I mean, yeah. <laughs> that's who, just who he is. Now, this one you were a little bit iffy about. I think it can be possible. Um, I, I don't see it being consistent. I, have- I see. I imagine drop-offs. It says that it will be 60 frames per second. It says, cited technical limitations, not aesthetics, as the reason for it being missing in Destiny 1. And my thing is, yeah, it might have peaks during cutscenes right. of 60 frames per second, but during gameplay, PvP, stuff like that, I don't think so. it's going to drop uh, to like... Thing. <laughs> it's going to drop back down. Here's the thing. You can force uh, FPS. Sometimes it Without causes UI no. lag. Right, it'll bottleneck your latency yeah. and things like that. Right now, consoles are not at a point where they can consistently handle 60 frames a second. I think it's going to be an option for PC yeah, gamers to I, choose it if their PC can handle um, it. Right now, the, the kind of the well-known, like, broke the wall for 60 frames a second on PC games was Dragon's Dogma. It yeah. consistently plays at 60 frames a second right now, and it's gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, I think Destiny could do that, and I think they could do it on consoles, but I think we need to wait for another iteration of this generation. I think we have the PS4, we have the PS4 Pro. Um, PlayStation 3 went through, did it go through three or four iterations before the PS4 came out? They took a step they back with the, the Slim model. They had the so fat, I don't really then consider they had the that. Slim, and then the Super Slim, right? Yeah, the Super Slim was kind of a step back, I think. But Might have been. They took away um, some of the features. So there might be another iteration of the PS4 in the future that'd be able to handle those technical specifications to be able to do that. Yeah. Right now, I don't think even the PS4 Pro could handle that. It, it, it's amazing the processing power you go through when you get above 45 frames a second. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. It's, in, it's insane. Yeah. Um, the next thing is what we talked about already. The powers of darkness will be introduced into the gameplay. So one of my thinking about this is there's so much story that they experimented with on Destiny for the first first game with all the, the, the DLC. The darkness is very broad, but the darkness, yeah. the closest association to darkness that we have are the queen who dabbles with it right? Um, at the reef. 
And we also have some information based on, well, Oryx, well, was he the darkness? He wasn't the darkness, or else the darkness would be gone, but it's not. Um, he was a front runner he was of the darkness. Agent. He was an agent. He, sure, he certainly was. Yeah. And it's not like the Cabal. The Cabal and the Fallen are just taking advantage of everything right now. Um, but yeah, that's true. They're like just vandals furthering and, their own ends. Right, exactly. Um, so they're just trying to get what they can because I feel like they're on the run from darkness too. They're furthering the ends of the darkness in the process. But Not realizing it. Because yeah. they're getting they're they're causing problems for the guardians who are the only hope for the light. So right, exactly. you know, it's just one of those things that so a chain reaction. For me personally, what we talked about earlier with the subclass being a darkness rather than a light based subclass, my thinking behind that is during the Taken King um, especially whenever the prison got its big update, they released the Taken Armor out of the boxes, right. Radiant Treasure, and you could get the Taken Armor, and the sword was really cool too, that legendary Dread sword. Thing. Yeah. So my thinking about that, if y'all know anything about lore, and if y'all don't, I highly suggest you check it out because it's super cool, is that the prison is not just a place for punishing badness, but they're very interested in learning about the darkness. That's why they're so right. rejected by they're the tower. They're starting to study those things. Yeah. They, they created that armor and tested it out a whole lot to make sure it was stable for guardians. Right. So I'm very curious if that's going to play a role with their experimenting with them now that you're as the darkness. The armor, I'm going to pull something up just to be curious about it. While um, you're pulling that up, I'm going to read off the next one real quick. That is a no-brainer as well <laughs> raids will be bigger longer and much more interesting in terms of mechanics moving forward and that means it better not lag yeah you would hope so Disconnect. like you would you would hope that as you move forward in an mmo raids would get more interesting i, right. I feel like that's right. kind of a moot point like why would you no uh, and i i understand the purpose of putting that in the post th yeah they i understand that too i'm curious as to why they said in terms of mechanics because the mechanics in my opinion got a little bit more simplified and streamlined in the new raid and i actually enjoyed it more because i felt like they implemented it towards fighting the guy himself like oh no he's activating screens that are releasing siva we need to destroy it that's a mechanic that makes sense not let's jump around on circles on platforms grab an orb right you know that didn't make sense it was cool and all <clears throat> but it lagged out it caused issues and it why are you doing that? What, that what came to sense? nothing, so I'm not going to mess with it. <laughs> well, it's like, well, what sense does that make? So in the new raid, I feel like all the mechanics make sense. Like a ship falls, and it well, breaks apart and drops if, the parts you need for the war machine. Yeah, and you especially repair. if you are, um, speaking of Destiny 2, if you are implementing, if there really are going to be new subclasses, and especially if there's a possibility of a new class, which um, we need to talk about in a separate video. We should do that. Um some ideas for what they might do. I'm going to say this, and it might get some backlash, and maybe not. And I, I want there to be separate mechanics for the easy mode and the hard mode, even without challenge mode. In other words, I want there to be things, for instance, yeah, I want one sense. of the raids, and <clears throat> down in the comment section, I want you guys to be putting your ideas down there of what you think about this, because maybe you guys will agree with me, some of y'all will, will like cuss me out for this. Y'all might, <laughs> might hate me for this, but on the hard mode, it shouldn't be able to be soloed right off the bat. Oh yeah. It should have mechanics that require a tether to shoot a certain area I mean, that a warlock can't hit, or a titan to do a something to that a hunter can't enough do. That one person can't do it on their own. Right. Exactly. <laughs> well, I would also I would hope that the mechanics involved. Okay, guys, we have to have a golden gun on this because mm -hmm. no one else can shoot that, other than a golden gun and a tether. Hammers won't fly high enough, or whatever. You know, I want something like that to where you're forced to build a team. I like that idea. I like that um, idea. Like, I want to say, well, we need a warlock because we have to charge something with electricity. We need a storm caller. And I really do believe that we need another class. And and and, and I'm only saying that because hunter, titan, warlock is all really cool, but they're still not covering all of the bases. We need a healing. Class. We need a healing. Class. <laughs> we do. So we, yeah. You and I have talked about this before. Yes, we have. We need something like a cleric or a priest, or you know, whatever you would want to call it, um, something that still fits the balance of hunt. Uh, you know, Titan hunter warlock cleric sounds really good. Mm -hmm. Titan hunter warlock priest sounds really good, um, and it would be really cool to implement a class like that and then reveal the prophet as the first of them, somebody who has studied a new line of light power and has created a new study a new field of study that allows people to mend wounds using the light because right. we don't have anything like that uh, and um it would be cool to implement a system where now don't go nuts over this okay <laughs> this is radical 
it would be cool to implement a system where there's a lot less recovery in Destiny. Yeah. Where yeah. you take a lot more damage, a lot more permanently. And that would... And you need to be healed. The Astrocyte helmet that the Warlocks got, that would make use of that. Because then it's like, well, yeah, the increased recovery, I want that, that because I can't... that sick, but I'm never going to use it. Yeah, but <laughs> if, if you implemented it to where recovery didn't happen unless you had a healer or something else, I or it was extremely slow... Actually. That helmet would be extremely useful saying, yeah. well, there's no healer around me. Right. I can get my, I own, can recovery, get my own recovery. Exactly. At least a little bit, you know? Um, or have more mechanics like um, the uh, presence of Crota in, in, the, in the Crota's End raid where recovery was just completely done away with. Yeah. And you had to have something like Red Death or the Suros or, and hope uh, that or some in. piece of gear that yeah. I don't think life support existed back then. Um, it, I don't think it did either, but yeah, shortly after that I'm pretty then it sure did. it didn't. I didn't raid during uh, Rise of Crota. But, um, <laughs> in fact, actually, I never raided. Um, here's the Taken shame King. moment. I've been playing till beta, and I didn't raid until Taken King. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is the really like, wah, wah, wah. And I was like, <laughs> the, and the I, pulled him, I pulled him into it, too. <laughs> He's like, it's about time. It, it's about time. <laughs> the guy that forever. I pulled into Destiny, <laughs> that after I had played in year one, year two rolled around, I was like, you have to try this crazy. And he's like, okay. So then we get into it, and I had never rated. <laughs> he's like, he's like, so what's Vault of Glass like? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm doing it. I, I, I've never done it. <laughs> yeah, so awesome. They, uh, this one's an, a little bit of a no-brainer. I'm hoping that it sticks with just, just PvP. <clears throat> and if they implement the world to be bigger to scale like something that ESO is or World of Warcraft, I'd be okay with the ships being small and maneuverable. I want open world. But they yes, I think that they're just, going to. I think that they're going to in some form. Here's what would be cool. Uh, they say that the ships will no longer be cosmetic only. No yeah. further details were given. Here's though. what I hope that means. I don't want. I want Star Fox, <laughs> <laughs> but not against the enemy. I want that to be like. I don't want dog <laughs> fights and hilarious. stuff. That would be cool. I but I don't want dog fights. Every At game that has tried to do that is just like aggravating. Okay, that would be cool. Because like Maybe. Sparrow Racing, some people don't like it. But. That's true. I like it. There's my two cents. Yeah, some people racing. hate it. Some people like it. Some people are like, we don't need Mario Kart. I'm like, we don't need Mario Kart. Mario Kart. It's not Mario Kart. You see blue shells running around everywhere? Here's my blue shell. <laughs> <laughs> Smacks you off the side of the room. Yeah. Map. Anyway, um, and then do that uh, that motion that looks suspiciously <laughs> like you're fucking <laughs> someone off. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, yes. um, but one of the things I really want to see in Destiny, I, t I said all of that. I went all the way around my fist to get to my thumb. Um, I want to see open world and open yes. space. I want to see a game where you jump into your jump ship and you fly to freaking Venus to get to your next mission. They need a currency system, which they already have set up <laughs> perfectly for it. And I like how ESO implemented it. Implement this into Destiny. I'll be fine with that. Make things like Legendary Marks easier to obtain or Glimmer. But make things like Quick Travel cost money, but make the, t make the tower... like. The wow. Iron Temple. You should have been able to fly there yeah. and teleport or take a, a mount there. You should be able yeah. to ride your sparrow or climb there if you want to to the social. <laughs> so or you, you can fast travel. You fly up into orbit and then you got to fly back down. You just go up into the upper atmosphere I mean, and fly over and It makes a down. level of sense because they are jump ships. Right. They're not made for low atmosphere flying. Right. Um, but make small it would little be cool to have portable little, mounts. Like, okay, here's the thing. Obviously, this takes place after Destiny 1 because we're, we're playing the same Guardians... And unless they do some super weird thing where we like some vex time gate happens Bro, and I'll we go honest. back in time and that's why all of our stuff is gone. This is unrelated. Honestly, I'd be okay with that. Hang on. Let me finish my rabbit trail because this is this important. Is... <laughs> <laughs> if it does take place after, then it would make sense that technology has progressed beyond where we are now. Right. We would have maybe discovered some uh, golden age technology that has allowed us to develop uh, low atmosphere ships and fighters and even capital ships that we're flying around now. Um, it would be really cool for the social area to be a big jump ship like the Dreadnought. Yeah. That it is like Vanguard and... colors with a massive Vanguard thing painted on the side. Ah! That would be so cool. Yeah. <laughs> they, uh, and to have a hangar where you go and you get in your own. Oh, that like, would be really cool. I would like one of the social mm. areas to be a city with actual people. Yes. I would like to see civilians. I want stuff. to see the last city. I want to see all of it. I want it to be a developed area, and I want there to be quests and things in there. I want there to be dangers in the city, and, and I don't know what they're going for with it. It, we've talked about some ideas that would involve some issues in the city. Well, yeah, but let's let's finish this well, first. Okay, so we, we need to. Finish. We're, we're taking a long time on it's, this. It's okay. It's okay. It's like okay. you high, but this you is high. <laughs> you I overhaul. Um, also you would including hope so. more, Again. yeah. 
but this one is also interesting. More customization features coming. If we have shaders already, I'm curious if they'll implement shaders for each piece of gear that you can mix and match, mm -hmm. or customization in the sense of like what you can put on guns. Maybe guns will. Ha I would hope they don't have attachments. Um, that's just my preference. I'm oh, that okay. Would be frustrating. I'm, I'm okay with how I they. Agree with you. I, I'm okay with how they fall. Um, I really like the loot dropping system. The grind for it's good, and whenever you get something great, I do think they need to bring rerolling back. The only reason I believe that is that. To balance out the issue of people just rerolling and rerolling and rerolling until they got a god roll, well, they can just make it more expensive. I would like for maybe or make it reset the light on the item. I would like for it maybe to <coughs> even maybe legendaries can't reroll, but exotics always have the same exact rolls, always all the weapons. So why can't I reroll at least mm -hmm. one of the perk slots, the ones that are not necessary, to try to get okay? I have an exotic. The legendary is better than it right now. Why is that Is Luna better than Hawkmoon? It shouldn't be. But I can what if see I rolled? Logic, yeah. What if I rolled the exact perks on my Is Luna onto my onto Hawkmoon? Your Hawkmoon? I can see that. That would logic. be awesome. I, I, and it and would cost glass needles and some expensive shards and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, some make material that you have to get. You know, and make it hard to find that stuff. Make yeah. it not something that just drops, or if you break it down, you get it out of another exotic. No, make it something that you have to find, you know, randomly like in a loot system. I'm um, okay with that. On the subject of the UI overhaul. I obviously you wouldn't expect it to be too different. There is a right. certain aesthetic that goes. You with have an destiny. expectation set, right? And that's they, what we. They've love. set a precedent, and I think they're going to stick with that. But if they're going to include new abilities and new ideas and new uh, a, and a new engine, especially yeah, they yeah, have to open a UI up overhaul stuff. is going to be necessary. Obvious. Yeah, it's going to well, be necessary. I would hope that with the new engine running it, I would hope that there's auto mount. <laughs> I was very happy with how Doom. Doom is so fast, so fluent. And fluid, and so, like yes. you fluid, you just go to a ledge and you whoop auto mount up it. So and that's I really want about Destiny that I appreciate. Catching my toe on stuff. Yeah. <laughs> there, there is one thing about Destiny oh. that I appreciate, and it's also the thing that I hate the most about it. <laughs> it is the fact that the the physics are very arcadey. Yeah. Uh, in Destiny, it's very kind of high floaty. Uh, a lot of jump time, and you bounce everywhere. That's yeah. cool until you bump your toe on that little tiny ledge in the vault of glass and you go flying 50 yards that way. <laughs> yes. Like a giant smash um, you or something. Oh my gosh. It's uh, the worst. This one I feel like is misquoted. It says that Eververse will not be as prominent as it is now. Now, I'm going to clarify what I think this means and what it should mean. It will be more prominent. You're going to see tons of new stuff. If they expect this to be more of a blend of an MMO... Or whatever, or uh, um, like an open world, I guess I should say, actually, and a shooter. If they want to blend it a little bit away from the shooter and make it more like World of Warcraft, more like you're going to have to have more aesthetics, yeah, more stuff like that to purchase. So I think it's going to be prominent in that sense. But whenever holiday stuff comes around, I think that's what they're talking about because that's what everyone was complaining about. Like, oh, yeah. this is Halloween, and everyone gets a box, and the rest of the stuff is behind a paywall. Everything's right. behind a paywall. Yeah. And people were so frustrated about the paywall. And I, I don't understand that frustration because I was actually away from home during the time that a yeah. lot of these holiday it events was, were happening it was and bad. Eververse was becoming prominent. Right now, in, in regular gameplay, Eververse is not prominent. Yeah, it's, um, it's not. Here's what I would hope. I would hope that what that means is that other uh, corporations are developing where we're actually interacting with reps from Suros, Tex Mechanica, uh, Crux Lomar, those companies are now getting involved in creating both cosmetic and functional yeah, items. Yeah, they need game. some stuff that's pur purchased with real money, and they need some stuff purchased ah. with in-store currency Here's something from else. people, and other than is, just the stupid factions. This is kind of along the same lines. Um, something that I have believed Destiny needs for a long time, and I also believe they've been working towards this, is crafting. Yeah, crafting. Uh, um, we that's... need we need the ability to become a gunsmith or an armor smith. Uh, Rather than getting armor drops from the future war cult, you would learn their crafting style slowly as you upgrade it. Make spread it out more. Take it to where you don't and you don't until you get to level ten. Then you finally get the chess piece motif sure, yeah. thing, and uh, then you can craft uh, and, whatever and chess piece you want. Uh, you said motif. We've been playing uh, Elder <laughs> online for I'm way too long. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, one of the one of the things that that I you know you notice that their farming is a massive part of Destiny. It's a grind, and I like that about Destiny. Oh, it's used for putting into guns. <laughs> yeah, and and so what they're Not doing now perks. is you grind these materials for perks on guns and armor, and it only makes sense that eventually at some point they're going to want to involve a system where 
you're going to be using that to create new things. And that things. could be the customization that they're talking about. Could be. It could yeah. be. Um, it could be that the crafting is only aesthetic gear. I'd be completely okay with that. One other quick thing before we mention the last thing, and I want to jump into the real conversation, the meat of this, where I want you guys to be responding down in the comment section, is that new non-Guardian races will be introduced. Everyone that we know has been a Guardian at some point, except for um, the lady who sells, like, shaders and stuff like that i don't think that oh yeah i don't think that she is and technically the the speaker i don't believe is no she's and the, she's the uh, faction reps are not either city. other than no i don't think any of the faction reps are either or the people at the tower um, so I'm as guessing far as i know like none of them associate based. with a class right. uh including lakshmi who um right. does on one hand express an intense amount of interest in the warlocks but she is not one yeah, she isn't. And I think that comes from the fact of their interest in time travel, simply yeah, from probably. that. And Especially she with came the from... fact that warlocks are so closely associated with the Vex. Hello, uh, the... Uh, time travel people. The, the crazy... What's the, the, the class armor that you get from the Vanguard Elite Bounties now? That Dying Star yeah. set. That is so Vex. Yeah. And then they've got the, the, the strike arm piece, the uh, Theosion Vibersay. Yeah. It's just what it is, and <laughs> the future war cult was spawned for the for once again read the lore people. It's really really interesting. It's actually some of the best lore I've ever read creepy. for games. Yeah, yeah, some of them are creepy, but the um Destiny's the a future war game. cult future war cult came from the college of Bray. Yes, through the Lovis scientists Bray yeah. on uh, Mars, right? and it's believed that they might even be or using Venus. their stuff on their, some of their subjects without anybody knowing, trying to test it out because a lot, almost everyone They're goes insane secretive. from using and it. They're, and they're ruled by an oligarchy. There's not a single leader to the, right. to the war cult. They're ruled by a, a, a <coughs> council um, called the Inner Circle. Right. right? Very, very uh, secretive. Ominous. Yeah. Yes. So, okay, so this is the meat of our conversation. Thank you for watching the rest of that beginning there. But. Two things I'm going to talk about, and I want to talk about what I think Destiny 2 is going to be about. This is complete speculation, what I believe it would be a good story, what I would love to see. It doesn't mean that it is what it is going to be, and I'll ask you what you think you would like to see as well. So the last two facts is that Xur <coughs> will play a new role in the overarching story, and the speaker will be central to the main storyline, which is kind of funny because, <laughs> him, and funny the, because him and the Vanguard are already. <laughs> Zur, the Vanguard, and the speaker are like the story. Yeah. The only thing I'm concerned about that we haven't heard anything about still is the stranger. The stranger. And Rasputin. Yeah. Well, okay, <laughs> so let me get into this because down in the comment section, let me know about like what you guys hope Destiny 2 will be about. Because the rest of that stuff is information that was given by apparently a Destiny or a Bungie employee. Apparently. Apparently. Not, we, right. Nobody knows that that's actually true. Right. And and we're not going no to say guarantees. either way whether we believe it's true or not. We we take it for what it's worth. We're going to make conversation out of it. Right. Some of it's really interesting, some of it's really obvious. But and there are a couple things in there that's just kind of like, okay, yeah, that's halfway believable. Right. Well, okay, so here's my take on it. <clears throat> it they're still alive. I don't believe it's going to be a prequel. Zur is not one of the nine. He is actually enslaved right. by them. His will is not his own. He even says it he himself. Says that himself yeah. He's imprisoned. Um the interesting thing is is that the Nine don't have a side. They're not good or bad. We don't know much about them. Very mysterious. In fact, we only know the general area of where they would be at. And interestingly enough, I think it's in the darkness. So we don't even know how, how they're there. The only people that we know that know where they are specifically, the Queen, Zur, and Osiris. Right. And the nine and the are interested in Osiris. The they really knowledge are. is kind of an issue of deduction, and it's it's not guaranteed that she knows. Yeah. Um, but she's, explain that. Yeah. Well, in the in the story, she sends them a gift. Um, it's Tanix. Yeah. Something and, we're very familiar with. Yeah. Yeah. And then Tanix gets released again, and it's like, well, how did he get out? Well, that's how it happened. Is that the queen sent Tanix as a gift, a peace treaty. Whenever she was near the reef, that's a very close area to where the nine are. They don't right. trust people. They're yeah. very big on technology, but they don't trust people. And so the issue is she sent a peace gift offering to them, and then they turned around and released him, which makes you think, well, are they even good or bad, or is it just that we don't care for your gift? Are they saying thank you? But in the cutscene for the Taken King, you think that she dies possibly. I believe she transported to the only location she knew to be safe, and that would be I'm going to the Nine. They'll keep me safe. Maybe they'll kill me, but it's better than dying to this guy. It could be, and this is complete speculation, she also may have known where Osiris was and went to the lighthouse. Yeah. And I, my, my thinking is, Osiris, I, I will never trust Osiris. I just uh -oh. can't do it. Power alone 
I'll and take his gear pride, and his guns, but I'm not trusting him. Pride, <laughs> pride and power got to the noble man's head, and that guy was noble, and that was Thorn's story. Right. Watch that as well. That's incredible. Most incredible, actually, story of all the weapons and all of Destiny. Yeah. It revolves around the last word in Thorn. We could do but, some videos about that. Yeah, good. it's super cool, but, I mean, if that darkness was just from the hive that got to the noble man, who was a great guardian, then... Imagine Osiris, who has a lot of power. He's part of the vanguard. He's got he's a lofty position, and he's a warlock, which already has in, warlocks have internal struggles with stuff like that, hidden huh. secret yeah. knowledge. Um, they don't make it a big deal of characters in the game, but right. in the lore, it is. Right. Um, and so for me, I don't trust Osiris. Osiris is bad, but that makes me worry about you know the nine having to decide between vanguard and Osiris because the the nine are kind of from what I've read, are kind of floating in between the two, you know? Um, they're very smart people. We don't know much about them. But here's what I think the story is going to be about, or what I would like it to be about. According to the story and according to The Dawning, we got a sparrow called Lysander's Cry. Right. This is interesting because you don't hear much about him, but apparently he is not just considering himself the son of the speaker, but in the speaker's grimoire card, he calls him his son. So they have a father-son relationship. But something's wrong there. He was obviously part of the Concordant, which New Monarchy was allowed to go in and destroy. And then now New Monarchy is even... They were the last ones allowed in. But they're allowed a tower now, which is mind-boggling. And it it, I, it would feel like betrayal for yeah. my father to let New Monarchy in after the Concordant. But to be fair, the Concordant did not agree with the Vanguard. That was the Future Wokal got into the tower as well. Yeah. Uh, after the Concordat fell out of grace, the Future War Cult there was an came opening. around, and uh, and the consensus allowed the Future War Cult to come into the tower. Yeah. Man. <laughs> <laughs> in other words, De Dead Orbit is the only faction at the tower that the Vanguard and the Speaker actually trust a little bit. The rest, they just let in because they had a spot and they had to agree on it. Yeah. And they said, here's your limitations. Uh, <clears throat> and they're also the two most, I don't know. Dead Orbit and New Monarchy don't agree very much. They're very polar opposites, but they're not dead enemies. Right. But the um, the interesting thing that I think that the story would be about is Lysander's outside of the city walls right now and on the outskirts inside the town mingling with people and apparently even guardians, uh, according to the story. And he is building reputation with them. See what I did there? <laughs> um, he's rallying troops against the Vanguard and against his father. So what I would like to see is him to step in, take down or weaken the Vanguard in an attempt, and then boom, out of nowhere, Osiris shows up whenever everyone's weakened with possibly even the help of the Nine. Who knows? The Queen, I think, is going to show up and be his Achilles heel, though. I bet she's going to be a double agent and help the Vanguard win <laughs> in the end. I think so. Because I think she's with the Nine, and I think Osiris is as well. And um, I believe that Osiris is going to take his chance to take his revenge on the Tower and humanity and take power over them. And whenever that happens, Lysander will probably not be an overarching story character. He'll probably be a bad guy at first and then die, which mm -hmm. would be a very sad story. Which, they're supposed of to have course. more cutscenes as right. well, which is great. More storytelling. Um, but that's what I would love to see, is a story about, like... Everything at this tail end of Lysander has created this big issue that left a huge gap for um, Osiris to step in. And he is, he's scary. He's the, probably the scariest one because Future War Cult, they're good guys. They just know, expect war. If you can Let's get just into. Let's make sure we win when yeah, it comes. Be, be good at war because yeah. no matter what timeline you're in, no matter where you go, war will follow you. Right. So be the best. That's their ideology. It's not a bad one. It's dangerous, but it's not bad. Right. But Osiris is there to manipulate. Right. And that's what makes me so scared. Um, so I, I don't know. It, I, there was an idea of Rasputin. I don't fully trust him. I don't not trust Rasputin. I feel like Rasputin, the, he, being a computer, he's analyzing the situation, and the Vanguard has given zero reason as to why he should trust us. Zero. It's true. And, in fact, other things happening has only made that appear worse. <clears throat> Not to mention, he had an issue with Especially with Siva. the whole thing with Siva. And, and actually, yeah. uh, Rasputin considered Siva his ally. So now that we have destroyed Siva, we've injured Rasputin in the process. Right. Um, and we would be 
in hard straits if we made an enemy out of Rasputin. We killed his wife, basically. <laughs> That's his way to populate himself with it's Siva. It's true. Yes. Siva is built around spreading very quickly. Right. And that was his way of populating himself. Mm -hmm. And now it's destroyed. And now the the we already know that Siva alone could reactivate the turrets, which are all pointed towards the city and towards the sky. Well, <laughs> and the, tra the traveler, the, the traveler is just sitting there. Uh, there is a specific directive that Rasputin has on hold right now. Uh, if you're really curious about this, it is in the Grimoire cards. You have you might have to decode a few things. There is a lot of. Um, technical language in mm -hmm. his uh, cards. It's disguised as kind of a, uh, a dialogue uh, within Rasputin, um, almost like a command box. Uh, and there is a specific directive that he has on hold right now that if things got bad, he would just start attacking the Traveler to force the humans... It's kind of a weird explanation, but basically he would attack the traveler to force the guardians to um, rally to rally for his self-preservation. Because he'd be the only last hope. Because here's also. an interesting thing about Rasputin. This is this is something that that we know to be true from uh, <laughs> Saladin the is story like... <laughs> from Saladin and from uh, the Grimoire is that Rasputin's original directive was to protect humanity. Uh, right. His original directive was to to use the war sats and the the other defensive uh, uh, placements on the wall and in the towers to defend humanity against the darkness. Right. But when Rasputin failed so many times, and he did, eventually got to the point that every every action he calculated came to a one hundred percent chance of failure. So Rasputin decided to shut down his original directive and changed it to a directive of pure self-preservation. Right. He gave up on humanity. And that that's an issue with computers in general is that yeah. they don't know where the holes are every time until the programming finds it, and then it can fix it right. according to that smart computer that and it's set up And in as. Rasputin's case, he had been made to make the best decision, the most strategic decision. And right. at that strategic. point, the most strategic decision was self-preservation, which has served to save our hides a couple of times. <laughs> yeah, it has. Because the fact that he's Saladin still around, doesn't trust it. Right. For good reason. For good reason. Uh, because uh, Rasputin is the one who um, manipulated them to begin Siva with. on the Iron Lords when they broke into Site 6. And the thing is, it viewed them as a threat eventually. At first it didn't. It was helping them advance humanity. Somebody, and then it turned... Yeah, yeah. Somebody, whether it was the Iron Lords or somebody else, broke into Site 17. And that aroused uh, Rasputin's defenses. Right. When they got into Site 6, the same place where the Wrath of the Machine takes place, right. they got in there. No, not the Wrath of the Machine. I'm sorry. Uh, the, the, the Iron Tomb. Yeah, the Iron uh, Tomb. Mission the on, final uh, mission. Yeah, in the Plague Lands. Um, that, that site uh, is the Siva Replication Chamber that Rasputin had control of. So when they started attacking that, it, 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 it got under Rasputin's you know, skin. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and he sent the frames after them, which are we know them as the like the postmaster and the the the, uh, the the bounty tracker. Those are frames. He had sevified frames and other things that he sent after the Iron Lords that in that idea. area. Some people thought that the frames in, in general would be a massive uprising. I think it's too much like iRobot, and I don't see any, <laughs> I don't see any reason for that being part of the story. I destiny. <laughs> yeah, I, I destiny. My destiny. No. <laughs> No, the frames um, are not rising up. Yeah, so I was like, <laughs> and it instantly shut down. Some people thought maybe now, Cabal, frames, Cabal had, had like their chance. I would like to see Shax and Archite get back into the fight because it has been stated in the Grimoires that when the Crucible has prepared people to a certain point, Shax is going to get back in the fight. I want that to happen. I'll be honest. <laughs> This would be heartbreaking, but I would be okay with Zavala and Ikora dying and having Shax and Cade having to work together. Mm. And along with, imagine Cade and um, <laughs> almost can a bitch. You what's uh, what's can the you other imagine? robot? Uh, Shiro. Shiro, yeah, Shiro, Shiro and Cade. I don't foresee liking each other all that much. Well, uh, they're both chill guys, but one is funny and Shiro, one's like deeply Sh serious. Shiro is. I'm gonna tell you why you're wrong. <laughs> because Shiro is Cade's student. I just uh, he learned directly under Cade. 
So they've been working together for years. Yeah, I just don't feel like... They might not be able to work together in the same capacity. So I agree with you on that point. It might not be the point where, like, okay, we're equals now. I don't think that's ever going to happen. I think. What that, do you think that the trespasser is talking about? Who do you think he was trespassing on that said, you're not welcome here? And he said, I beg to differ. <laughs> who do you think that was? Because <laughs> I hate to think that's Cade. <laughs> and Cade said, you're not welcome here. I beg to differ. Because they have the... <laughs> it just sounds like something he would have heard from Cade. You know that. But I don't know. I think it'd be a very interesting... I think that Saladin would definitely take the place of either Shax or Zavala. Zavala is trusted by a lot of people. Yeah. So he might um, be even manipulated or killed. How if he's good, would he'll it be die. To see to see Ikora and Zavala taken out of the picture and Shax steps in as the Titan Vanguard and then Lakshmi takes up the uh, the robes of a warlock and becomes a warlock vanguard. That would be interesting, except for the fact that she hasn't been a warlock, so that experience is not there. I'll be honest, but I would like to see or Eris. This is this is <laughs> this is completely irrelevant to. I would like to see Cade, Eris, and uh, Saladin be the new Vanguard mm -hmm. after it falls apart and they're struggling to get back on their feet. I think it would be a very interesting mix. Well, it would be interesting to see Cade and Eris interact again. And they're funny together. <laughs> and there's not a love interest because Cade had his love interest already. Right. Um, but uh, Saladin. And Eris would be like Saladin would never trust Eris. He mm -hmm. never would. There's no way he would. He has hardly any trust for anybody after what happened with Siva. Right. Um, in fact, he was kind of worried why Lady Efferty even left, and everyone thought she was dead until she showed back up on the scene, and now she runs Iron Banner. Hey guys, yeah. I'm back. <laughs> hey guys, I'm not dead. But and I'm not doing anything for the fight against the darkness. <laughs> <laughs> but I've got nice gear for you. Get your clever dragon, everyone. So, anyways, guys, I appreciate you guys listening to us ramble that's what we think it's going to be about at least this i feel is, like that would be great yeah. and this is going to be the beginning of a series of videos i feel where once we get some feedback from people once we hear some things mm -hmm. as to what people think uh they're going to see not just based on what we've talked about uh but also maybe other things they've seen in the grimoire cards on pieces of gear uh bungie hides little tidbits all over the place so um, yeah they do this this I I'm I feel like this is the beginning of a series of videos where we'll be continuing to take up subjects that people are bringing up and run with them. Right, and as soon as Destiny comes out, we're gonna do a response video saying this is where we were right, where we were wrong massively. <laughs> and like I said, I guarantee you, like I feel like there's no other reason Lysander would be even re mentioned so hiddenly, but yeah. so obviously for something so simple as sparrow racing. Yeah, like. I feel like Lys Lysander is a strong, like, take it for whatever grain of salt you want to, but I think it's, you can take it for the whole, the whole pound of salt if you want, because I really feel like there's a reason that they keep mentioning stuff like that, and the speaker being a big part of it. Anyways, guys, this has been Crazy Talk. I'm Crazy121, and this is Fizzmeister, Mallboy. Uh, <laughs> see you guys around in the next video. Thanks for checking us out, guys. Take it easy.